Earlier this year, we told you about two bills in Congress that were supposed to crack down on Internet piracy, but went well beyond that. As a result of public outcry, SOPA and PIPA were shelved. But it didn't take long for them to come back in the form of a new bill. Ben has the reality check you won't see anywhere else. Well, SOPA and PIPA were two separate bills that members of Congress claimed would protect intellectual property on the Internet. But the public didn't buy it. Months ago, we told you how those bills were incredibly overreaching. Well, now a new bill called CISPA is making its way through the House. So what is CISPA? The Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act. Members of Congress claim that CISPA is needed to protect the nation from cyber attacks. It sounds good. Until you actually read H.R. 3523. Then you find that the vague language would actually allow the feds the authority to override every existing online privacy law by monitoring and collecting information on anything that includes efforts to degrade, disrupt, or destroy an online system or network, or theft or misappropriation of private or government information, intellectual property, or personally identifiable information. So how close is this bill to becoming law? Well, it's moving pretty fast. The bill has widespread bipartisan support with more than 100 co-sponsors in the House. Letters of support from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and several major technology companies are backing it, including Facebook and Microsoft. The bill's authors, Congressman Mike Rogers, a Republican from Michigan, and Dutch Ruppersberger, a Democrat from Maryland, they say that the bill was non-invasive and very limiting. In fact, the House Intelligence Committee has set up a Twitter account to show people they are in touch with the online community and to break down the myths about CISPA. But is what they're telling you true? Take, for instance, this tweet. Rogers Ruppersberger, cyber bill, keeps the federal government's hands off the Internet and doesn't allow the government to stop access to websites. But that is not true. Keeps the federal government's hands off the Internet? Well, the entire point of CISPA is to give every federal agency that already has its hands on the Internet even more information and more power. It is true that the bill itself does not have any provisions specifically relating to blocking website access, but the bill does create clear provisions for companies to give data to Homeland Security. And Homeland Security is already in the practice of seizing websites. Here's another one. CISPA includes a provision to ensure info can't be shared with the government or used under this bill unless there is a direct tie to cybersecurity. But again, that's not entirely true. Information can only be shared with the government if it's related to cybersecurity, but it can be used by the government for the purposes of cybersecurity or national security once they've got it. And as you know, the term national security and cybersecurity, those are very broad. So what are we really talking about here? Well, how about the idea that anything you do online is being private? Won't be. CISPA would authorize the private sector. Search engines, web companies, social networking sites, pretty much you name it. They could share customers' personal information and the contents of private communications with the federal government. That's already a problem. But CISPA gets much worse. If you think that the use of your private information would be limited to cybersecurity purposes, it's not. So any personal information you have on Twitter or Facebook or even Amazon.com, it's available for the feds to seize and to hold if you're suspected of any cyber crime. And that could include any blogger, for instance, who posts a reality check, which technically isn't their property. And there are no limitations on how long the government can keep that data once they have it or what else they can use it for once they have it. And that's what you need to know. Under CISPA, once an individual's information is in the government's hands, it can be used for just about any purpose. And that's the biggest problem here. The bill's authors also admit that aside from sharing cyber threat information, the bill could be used for other purposes. But they won't say what those other purposes might be. And that is Reality Check. If you'd like to make your voice heard in the story, head over to Ben's Facebook page. You can find it by searching Ben Swan WXIX.